So let's get running. Uh, for the next 45 minutes, we'll show you a little bit more about product demos, uh, some of the Power Platform apps and solutions we build, and also obviously uh, show you how you can use ILGO to build uh, very, very amazing stuff. So let's get started. How many of you use Power Platform or just play around with Power Platform to build some kind of value you can sell, show, or inspire people around you? Well, we don't have enough hands. I hope next time you'll see more and more and more. But actually, you can really, really build a lot. And it's an idea that it's easy, you know, cost-saving, and, and it just looks and feels great. Uh, one of the main promises with Power Platform is that it has so many connectors. Like this slide last month or two months ago was 900 connector, and now it's more than 1,000. So it's really easy to inject real integrations uh, with, you know, in a very kind of light fashion and build value of that. Now, you can say, why would you even consider to start building Power Apps? We have a great platform. We are on mobile, on tablet, or obviously on desktop and the cloud. And I think in the real life, there's a lot of scenarios why you would seriously want to consider, at least consider, to start building Power Apps. For example, you might want to build some very special crafted UI or user experience to those applications. I just talked about connector connectors, meaning you can really reach a lot of services and integrations in, in, in no time. We show you yesterday in the keynote how we can use like virtual reality controls. And obviously from a maybe licensing perspective, Power Apps usage rights are part of some of the business central licenses. So it's not like in some cases you need to pay extra just to get uh, that stuff rolling. What we announced yesterday on our keynote is that as a Microsoft, we give you a number of apps. We start with three. We show you one. We'll show you two more right now. Uh, basically, apps to inspire you, also your customers, what you can build, which guide not only as a great apps to use, you know, in your hands, but also as a go ahead, copy, modify, and learn learn how to build uh, power apps. With that. I would like Anas to take us a bit more about those apps and show them in real life. Thank you. Yeah, as Evgeny mentioned, we're releasing three separate apps, the Take Order app, the Warehouse Helper app, and the Coffee MR app. The motivation for building these apps has multiple factors to it. First off, we wanted to make an easy starting point for partners to get started if they want to build power apps with Business Central, either using it as a foundation to build on or just getting inspiration from what you can build. We also had an aspect of, it also had an aspect of dog fooding to it. So we wanted to practice what we preach and see what kind of roadblocks partners hit when they try to build power apps connected to Business Central. And we took all that learning and put it into the apps so they should encompass some of the best practices in there. And of course, as we already mentioned a couple of times, it's using the new ALGO for GitHub PTE template. We will go ahead. Uh, the first app we're going to be looking at is the Warehouse Helper app. So this is a simple app that lets you scan an item and update the item's inventory. We purposefully make this a very simple scenario because we know warehouse management is complicated and there's a lot of solutions out there already solving this. So we don't want to spend time and energy competing with any of your solutions. Instead, we wanted to build an easy foundation that you can use, either build upon or as an inspiration that solves all the technical aspects of power app development in this area and gives you some visual UI patterns that you can reuse if you want to for your own app. Let's switch over and see what it looks like. I think that was enough slides. And we don't use a phone. We don't use a phone. We just use an iPad still because it's just easy to connect. But in real life, you'll use your, your phone, which you have in your pocket. Exactly. To do that. If you look at the app, you can see it's very different from anything we built in visual in, inside, visual stint, inside Business Central. There's some branding resources here, either for the customer or for the partner who built it. We have a little information icon where you can put in more information about how to use the app, put in some links to additional documentation. Uh, because it's a warehouse helper, we obviously need to be able to pick what warehouse we're working in. That information is persisted in the app, so users only have to choose it when they move between warehouses. Um, there's a big call to action that I think we should just try hitting. And this takes us directly into the, yeah, I'll need to move over to the other side. This takes us directly into the barcode scanning capabilities of Power Platform. This is a capability that Power Platform supports out of the box, so there's no need for us to do anything other than integrate it into our Power App. 
as part of the sample we're sending out, we also have a small document with some sample barcodes and an AL extension that extends some of the APIs we want to use and just sets up the GTIN code for some of these items. So we can go ahead and scan this. Now it takes that barcode, passes it into the GTIN number and pulls the information from Business Central. You can see here we have a very simple card that shows the information we need and some intuitive UI controls we can use to update the uh, inventory value. And you just go ahead and submit that. And that updates the value inside Business Central and takes you right back into the scanning experience. There you go. So that was the first app we have. The second app we want to show you The second app we want to show you is the Take Order app. This is a more complete scenario. It's focused on frontline workers at restaurants, and it lets them assign tables to customers and take orders from these customers in an intuitive interface. But uh, let's just go ahead and see what the app actually looks like. Thank you. You'll see visually there's a lot of similarities to the other app I showed you, and that's because we're trying to establish a sort of simple visual identity that you can just copy for your own apps that makes it easier to build a line of power apps that you can use for your users. There's some branding material, there's the information tag up there, but let's just go ahead and start taking orders. The first screen we see is the available tables we have at this restaurant. You can see there are already two people, or two groups of people seated at table one and two. We have a new group coming in and they want a little privacy, so we'll just put them at table six. Now this takes me to the menu. You can see all the items we have available, you can use the filters to navigate through them to make it easy for you to, uh, to give the customer what they want. One of the things we focused on a lot here is that we wanted to build something that felt like a native experience. So stuff like doing quantity controls that look similar to what you get in native apps for shopping, using a common shopping basket paradigm where you can see the amount of items you picked and the total amount of money it costs is uh, some things we decided to do to make this easier to use. I've added a few things to this order already, so let's go ahead and review it. We're taken to a summary page here where we summarize the content of the order to make it easy to get an overview and see that everyone in the group actually got something that they, uh, they ordered. You can expand this and take a look. And if there are any questions to the food, you can just click one of the items and you're presented with a simple item card that has information about the uh, product you're selling. It can have information about allergens. And of course, the uh, quantity control is also available here. So we can just go ahead and update that. Let's submit that order. Now what this does is that it uh, creates a sales order inside Business Central and adds each of these lines as a sales line. You can see that table six is now updated. There's an order that's been placed. If we click on it, we'll load the sales order from Business Central and pass it into the summary that we saw before. And you can either add more to the order or just go ahead and check it out. Checking out an order means posting it inside Business Central. We're using a Power Automate flow to trigger that action. So this really is utilizing a lot of the Power Platform capabilities and components we have available. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was a quick introduction to the apps. We're not going to show the Coffee MR app again because we already showed that at the keynote yesterday. But if you want to, we will, we will encourage you to go and try them out. They are live on GitHub, GitHub now under the topic BC samples that you see here on the slide. I do I need to be a developer to get all those apps, like do something? That's a good about question. It? So you can either fork the repositories like Freddie talked about, make it your own app, customize it, make your own changes and use it, or you can just go to the releases that are in the repo and take the zip file and the AL file and download in your environment like we saw in the previous session. So it's very easy to you to try without apps, without even look, um, even how is it built. All right, so we're going to discuss right now, what does it take us to build such apps and make them repeatable? Repeatable meaning you don't do it once, but you can build, distribute, hopefully, you know, get your customers, uh, internal collaboration, and so on and so forth. But before we do that, let's just have a very Kind of quick overview. What does it take to build a Power App? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about Power App, but you're talking about kind of Power App solution, which is just one representation of that. Uh, first of all, you need to build like you know app itself, which is like straightforward, 
They have a great capability, drag and drop controls. You can really express a lot of layouts. It's, you know, it's no problem with that. Uh, you need to have some data to show in your apps, and the way how it works, it's powered by connectors. The data can be powered by any data sources. And from Business Central, we do recommend you use our first party, I don't know, our own connector, so you can go ahead and build apps with the data which come directly from Business Central. Now, obviously, it's like, obviously, it's all about data. So for you as the ICs or partners, you do need to build APIs which expose your data, which you can consume in an app, show on a screen, and work over that. So the first insight that Power Apps never exist on its own. You always have your asset, your solution, with your API layer so we can talk to it and get some magic happen. In many, many, many cases. We do give you API out of box, but you all know they're basic, and usually you need to bring more uh, to make some ma magic happen. Good news, at Microsoft, we do a lot of investment in our connectors, release over release. We just show you how easy for you to, I don't know, get all images, uh, on the screen, translation, support custom API. So innovation happening, you know, semester after semester, more and more features coming. So it's like we really put attention to that and we try to make it uh, more and more powerful with wave over wave. Let's say you have a power app and let's say you have extension. So the concept we kind of want to have you, maybe like a mental concept, it's like you want to get it to one solution or one, or one package, and then have an ability to work with this package, maybe move it to environment or multiple environment, because that usually will be the case. And it scales, you have usually multiple uh, customers or whatever. And in a real life, it's not just a move that package because you need to build it, develop, modify, hotfix, verify, support, and so on and so forth. Like a whole like a life cycle is happening with that package exactly as uh, Freddy and Christoph just showed you five minutes ago. So it's all applied, but now it's part of the solution, and now you all code, and somehow it needs to work together on scale. Let, let's talk about, not like the main challenges, but what are the main things involved and where we are with different blocks. So first of all, we need to build IL extension which expose APIs. The good news is not a problem. You need to have a developer who can do it for you. We don't give you yet any no-code tools, so we don't have any support that, you know, as a consultant on end user, you can go ahead, expose your APIs, some kind of in UI, and get them created. You still need to have development involved to build those APIs, but that's something we'll hopefully address uh, in the near future, but we all know how to do that job right now. From Power Platform perspective, two years ago, it was really, really, really hard to build something which can be, like, be repeatable or maintained. There was not that many application lifecycle management tools, but as of now, the world has changed. Power Platform put a lot of attention to make sure their assets can be reused, and they also put a lot of effort semester after semester to build more application lifecycle management features. So for example, if you go to their website, there's a lot of, not just a lot of thinking, but for example, six months ago we announced Power Pages. Uh, two months ago we announced now we can, you know, uh, have a lifecycle management for Power, for power Pages. You have uh, IL GitHub action. So team put effort to make sure Power Platform assets can be used, which is super helpful for us because we don't need those capabilities in the first place. Now, the real problem as of now to build repeatable Power Apps, actually uh, a little bit how Power Apps are built. Because right now, if you build a Power App, your connections to uh, Business Central APIs backend is hard-coded as a part of application. So what it means, it means it's not like an end user can go ahead, select which environment to connect, but it's really very kind of deep hard-coded as a way how that uh, app is built. It's not something specific to Business Central as a connector. That's just how Power Apps are working today. So we have this limitation as of now that some of the connections are hard-coded to the given environment. So what it means, if you look somewhere in the code, and I don't want you to look at it, but if, there is, if you build an app on a given, for a given environment, somewhere in the app, you have hard-coded reference, and it's really, really tricky to find it, first of all, but second of all, to change to something else. 
So what does it mean? It means if you build an app today, together with the extension, get the one solution, and want pop to publish to another environment, it's actually not gonna work, because once you publish it there, you won't be able to compile, so to speak, because the reference is invalid, and then nothing is working, you need to, you need to do some manual work, so it's not helpful uh, for anyone, well, for us at least. So what we announced yesterday, that we built incredible tools based on a IL Go for GitHub, which help us to deal with some of those challenges. And right now we're going to look how it looks in real life. So back to Anders. Thank you. Yeah, let's take a look at what a normal development flow can look like when you're working with Power Apps using the tools we just talked about here. So this is the Coffee MR Field Helper app that we showed yesterday. I'm gonna be making a change, but let's keep it really simple so we don't overcomplicate the PR. We have a little byline here, and I think we could update that to, let's say we love coffee instead, and just add a few exclamation marks to make it like really clear that we really like coffee here. We'll save these changes and we'll publish them on the development environment that I'm working on here. So we can go ahead and validate that this is what we want. After we've done some testing here in the dev environment, we wanna get these changes into our GitHub repository. So let's jump right into the repository. It is right here. So right now you'll see that this is under my private user, but coming soon we'll be publishing this along with the two other sample apps so you can try them out just straight from GitHub. Um, if you're looking at the repository here, you'll see that we have the Coffee MR folder, which corresponds to the Power Platform solution containing the Power App and the Power Automate uh, artifacts that we're using to solve this scenario. We also have a small AL extension here that we use to extend the APIs with some additional information we need and set up some sample data to get the app to run easily. Uh, what we want right now is to get the Power Platform changes into this repository. So we'll go over to the actions that we get for free with the AL Go template. Um, you'll notice that compared to the previous session, we have a lot of the same things you see but we have two new ones, which is called pull power platform changes and push power platform changes. These actions allow us to connect to your Dataverse environment and get the changes into your repository and into a nice PR. If you run a run them, you just go ahead and specify what environment you're using and say run workflow. Now, as you can see, these can take a couple of minutes to run because of the way GitHub manages their dispatcher runner logic and this is a pretty low budget account right now because it's my own. Uh, so instead of waiting for that, I prepared a preview or I prepared a pull request right before using the pull power platform actions. So let's just go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. You can see that we're updating the solution with the latest changes from the power, plat from the power apps environment that we have. Um, and this is just a normal GitHub PR. But if we go into the files changed, and let me say right away, this is an area that Power Apps know they have some issues in and are working on because a lot of their state information of the app is part of the source code. So your pull requests are gonna be a little messy, but as soon as you get used to knowing where you need to look, it's actually pretty easy to see. So all of these things up here are just state information, but if you're looking inside the connection folder or the SRC source folder, you can see the change we did. And you can see we actually changed the byline before, so maybe we need to think a little harder before we change it this time. Um, if we wanna just take a look at the actual file here, you can see that each of the screens inside the Power App are represented using YAML. So it's not the easiest language to compile for people when they wanna read it and understand it, but it is actually possible. You can see the name of the start screen here, and you can see all the visual components that we have on the screen. Um, there's also all the actions, like the invisible action that we're using here to reset some things, and the PowerFX code that is running there. So if you want to, you can definitely still do like proper review cycles and make sure that the code that you want to check in is uh, something that makes sense. So, so what just happened is basically Anders was on his development environment, he did a change to Power App. Obviously, it's a simple change. You can do much more sophisticated change. You can also change your L code. And then we take these changes and we, and we kind of push or pull, depends how you look, to have a centralized repository. And now I'm gonna show you the next step. How can you take our updated asset and distribute 
to different environments, like customer environments or whatever uh, it might be. So we look on the second part, from change to distribution. Yep, exactly. And there are a number of different ways you can distribute your code using these actions. As uh, Christoph and Freddy just showed you, there's full support for continuous integration. Uh, by the way, if you didn't notice, I moved to the warehouse helper environment here, which is one of the public environments that you can go and check the source code out of or just check out the release items or the release artifacts and download the Power Platform solution and AL app from here. In here, you'll see that we have a working CI CD flow that is currently, is that something you can see? Try it like that. That's currently deploying to staging. And if I jump into this job, you'll see that we don't just deploy the AL, but we deploy the AL and then the Power Platform solution. So if you want to get your bits into an environment to make sure you can do some Q&A or validation, we definitely recommend you set up the CI CD flow and use that. Uh, obviously for production, this is not the ideal way to go about that. Instead here, what you want to do is you want to validate your code, you want to create a release, and then that release is going to be available on your GitHub repository right under here. And as, uh, as we already saw, you have all the relevant files available here to either download to manually deploy or you can go ahead and use some of the actions that we have available as part of the template. You publish to environment action is an action that's part of the core AL Go, Git, AL Go for GitHub template, uh, but we've updated it in this preview version to include steps to deploy our Power Platform solutions. So you can see here we ran it to deploy it to the BC Tech Days demo, which is the one we used to show you the sample apps from, and this contains both the AL and the uh, Power Platform artifacts. Yeah, so by the way, that's how we do demo in Microsoft. You don't go to a machine. I don't need to, I don't need any more, or Fred doesn't need any more before Dimitris or Mike Mortons or Harina or Yannick demos to log on and create all stuff. We can just push a button, move all of our demo apps and extensions, and then we can use a demo environment for a great demo. So just a lot of time savers. So what just has happened is honors took a latest change with our Power App, we changed the label, our IL extension, and move it to environment which can be customer environment, can be production environment. But the funny part, I just told you five minutes ago that it's not possible because some reference should be hard-coded. But that's exactly the magic of automation we give you because behind the scene, we do some transformation, we know where we go, we know which environment, we know uh, which configuration, and we can go ahead and update all power platform assets behind the scene to do all this invisible work. So now this package will be up and running, ready on that environment with no more manual work required. If you reflect back, without having these tools, you need to find a developer who can build IL code and APIs, great. Find another power platform developer, maybe different people. Uh, try to get stuff together, somehow compile, somehow to apply, deploy, customize to make this package ready to be consumed. And with a new tooling, you basically just press a button, which was called like deploy to environment. E even I can understand that. You press a button, magic happens, and you're ready to go. So how can we start on that journey to get to that state? That is a great question. And luckily, it's as easy as three simple steps. First, you need to get your repository, which we've seen a couple of times. You need to configure the environment you want the repository to connect to, and then you just add your code. Let's go ahead and see what that can look like. Thank you. Um, so depending on what you're trying to achieve, there's a few different ways you can go about getting a repository. If you're just interested in trying out some of the samples we have, the easiest way for you is to go to the BC samples topic on Business Central. This is where you'll find the two current samples that we have available, and it's also where the uh, Coffee MR helper will be available once that's published. If we jump into one of the samples, like the take order sample here, you can see that the repository is here. So you can either get the package you need, the AL, the AL extension and the Power Platform solution from the release artifacts, or you can go ahead and just fork, your, fork the branch and create your own version of it and start building on top of that or just set up the environment and deploy it. Uh, on the other hand, if you already have a Power Platform solution and you're looking to get 
uh, source control and application lifecycle management support for it, what we would recommend you do is to go to the AL Go PTE template and use that template as a starting point. This template also has the three easy steps to get started and a link to get a more detailed description of an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. The next step is to set up the connection to the environment. Um, let me jump back into one of our repositories to show you what that looks like. So we already saw the, um, sorry, that's the wrong file. We already saw the ALGO settings file, uh, and there's been some changes to it to support Power Platform solutions. So now you have a Power Platform solution folder name here, which corresponds to the name of your Power Platform solution in Power Platform. Um, you set up the environment like you usually do, and then you define deployment. Is, is this a good resolution? Yeah, I guess so. Then you define deployment information on how you want to connect your artifacts to that environment, or with what BC and Power Platform environment you want to connect to. You can see we have the Business Central environment name and the Business Central company ID. We also have the Power Platform environment name, and that's the Power Platform environment you're going to be deploying your solution into. Once you've set up the environment information, you need to set up authentication. I think we also covered this a bit in the previous uh, talk, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. The way I've done it is just to create some repository secrets for this repo, and you can see I have one for each of, uh, of the environments we've set up here. The steps needed to, uh, the authentication context is a string of JSON that defines the authentication you want to use, the authentication method and tokens that you want to use to connect to your environments. Um, you can get these pretty easily by just following the steps we have available under our setup guide. Just find those as well. You can see there's a detailed step-by-step -step explanation here of how to set it up and some code snippets you can run that'll help you sign in and generate all the tokens you need to get your environment up and working. Then the last thing you need to do is just to add your own code. We've already seen that you can simply just drag and drop the solutions if you already have them locally. If you don't have them locally, you can go ahead and use the actions that we have available as part of the template to get those solutions into your repository. I guess when we're saying we show you Power Apps, but we're talking about Power Platform solution, what we mean by that, you can bring your automation flows, Power Apps, as a package, and we can all deploy it on your behalf to a different environment. So it depends what you really need when you build Power Platform solutions. We have one link to go, BC Power Apps, to get all the knowledge. And with that, we are looking forward to what you're going to build. And we have some like 15 minutes for a Q&A, for a question. We had like a lot of topic, so maybe we can get Freddy and Kristoff back on stage and we can have a conversation about everything you've seen and learned today. Do you wanna? Yeah, I'll just repeat the question. Thanks, sir. Hi. Um, so if I want to publish a power platform app to 100 customers, I need to create 100 environments and push each on its own. And if I have an update, I have, again, to push 100 buttons. So if you want to connect to, uh, yeah, I don't know, could people hear the question? Maybe you want to repeat quickly. Yeah, so the question was, what if I have multiple production environments I want to deploy to? Do I need to manually run the publish action each time? Uh, you do need to do the setup for each environment so you are authenticated to connect to it. But in the publish to environment action, oh, sorry, let me just run the action instead of this. Um, you can use wildcards to say what environments you want to deploy to. So here you can do prod star, and that'll deploy to all your production environments. And this is a common function, a piece of the core functionality of the ALGO template. But if you have 100 customers and you have like a Power Platform solution, maybe you should put that Power Platform solution on App Source and, and to use that update engine for, for that instead of, of having them as PTEs. But you're right, if you have a number of uh, the, a manageable number than environments there, you might actually have a situation, or, or it is our recommendation, that you create 
one AL Go repository per customer, and then use dependencies to say, this customer actually uses these apps and these Power Platform solutions from other, and then use the deployment so you'll have one environment there and you control the upload from that for that. So you can use multiple different setups for that. But great question. And the purpose of the preview is to get like real world experience and how people want to use Power Platform along with the different technical solutions. So if we start seeing that like having a lot of customers for a per standard extension is the way to do it, then we can uh, look at improving the process as well. I had a question right and we'll come to the left. Um, hi. Everything you showed so far was using uh, GitHub. If we are still using Azure DevOps, uh, should we migrate? Because it seems like we are betting on a dead horse. I think, Freddy, it's a great question to you. You can maybe repeat. Well, to get the functionality that we have here uh, for free, you need to be on GitHub. Uh, there are the Power Platform team has shipped there. Um, their workflows or their, their actions for Azure DevOps as well. So you'd have to, like, if you want to stay on Azure DevOps, you'd have to, uh, to, to, to use these to create your own workflows for these things. Or maybe, I don't know if Allops are going to support uh, a, I think I heard him talk about ALM for a Power Platform as well, but probably going to be different. What we're doing is on GitHub only, and that's our focus. But maybe just to clarify, we, we haven't built any specific IL uh, GitHub action to you know, take a Power Platform solution package and pack. It's all done by Power Platform. So Power Platform invests heavily in the GitHub themselves, and we basically benefit tooling the gift, so to speak, for us. So I guess, yes, investments happen across all Microsoft groups to this tooling. So it's only like a this is, if it makes sense. I had a question on the left. Yeah, that was actually also about uh, GitHub versus DevOps. We've heard so much about GitHub, and it seems like DevOps is just no longer existing in, in the, the environment. So is this a final push uh, away from DevOps? Um, do, you, do you recommend us all the switching to, to GitHub now, or what's going on? Yeah. So you're not going to hear me say, I recommend you all switch to GitHub. So. We created ALGO for GitHub, and we are, we are extending ALGO for GitHub in order to, uh, to, to, to make partners be able to save time. Uh, if you want to take advantage of these things, yes, you need to switch to GitHub. Uh, we have a lot of stuff on Azure DevOps ourselves in Microsoft, so Azure DevOps is not going away. If you have uh, stuff on Azure DevOps that you're developing yourself, like scripts and stuff like that, you should look at how much time you spend on that and say, if I spend maybe one developer resource a week or a month or whatever, is it worth being there or should I switch in order to actually have that developer spend time on something that provides customer value instead? Uh, so it, it's, it's, your, it's a decision that you need to make. Uh, all of these things are free on GitHub yeah. and all our innovation is free. When we like going, uh, going forward, we are going to do a lot of things on switching to Linux in order to save time and money and stuff like that. All of that, of course, is not going to be available for, for you on Azure DevOps as well. So what you're seeing is just our innovation is on GitHub. And when we started out looking what should our platform be, just as when we started out looking at VS Code versus Visual Studio, we selected VS Code. Maybe a bold move back then, totally the right move today. When we started uh, one and a half year ago looking at Azure DevOps versus VS Code and we said, uh, versus uh, GitHub, selected GitHub, um, we're happy with that. We know that a lot of partners are on Azure DevOps already, but we think that GitHub is the right place to be for a, for a SMB solution that is free and, and agile like ALGO for GitHub is because I see Azure DevOps more like a enterprise DevOps solution and, and, and it's up to customers what they want to. And maybe you go. Um, I was using DevOps, I was using uh, a Bitbucket, and now I'm using GitHub, <laughs> and all because of like corporate us. things and so on. And to be honest, uh, as a developer, I like GitHub. Uh, I mean, from uh, maybe it's not perfect for the projects, let's face it, but for the code and for how you can also <coughs> use Visual Studio Code with that, you can see there is a like, uh, 
uh, native uh, functionalities also for visual uh, extensions for Visual Studio Code, like an actions, which we didn't show, right? Uh, also showing it just uh, Visual Studio Code directly from GitHub. You will just change .dev and you will see it. So there is a lot of things which are there, which I would not switch it to DevOps to, to store my code because I just like how GitHub works for me, right? It's, it's much simpler, I think, in many places. Of course, uh, for maintaining the backlog, I'm not using it, I'm using Jira. Uh, because that's also cor what corporates provide it. And also, maybe we can use Victor. Like, we're getting feedback, you know, can you guys help us to move my Power Pages, maybe my Power BI reports? I guess it's a no-brainer, and for us, that'll be the area we're going to bring it first, to make it just happen, such, a, such type of feedback. Like, for us, that'll be the default checkman. Like, no discussion about that. Okay. Yes. Um, perhaps a question for the future. Oh, are there two? <laughs> um, you showed us how you can deploy from GitHub to the customer environment. Um, mixed solution with um, RL and uh, Power Platform, but if you have something in the app source, RL solution, and if you want to have mixed solution that you want to deploy from there, how could you do that? And another question, that's with Power Platform, but we also have often the problem that we need also Azure function, and all that stuff must be deployed from app source to the end customer. And how are you planning to do that in the future? Good question. So I probably can take that. Um, on the app source, I had a slide talking about NuGet. Uh, the, the biggest problem with, with app source apps is really that in order to build the apps, you need to get the runtime package from the partner. What we're looking at there is to create a service endpoint on app source where you will be able to get symbols so that now you can build. And also, if, if partners are opting in, then we can get runtime packages automatically generated from AppSource. Then you can also run tests. Until then, you'd only be able to run tests on online sandboxes. The, the, the deployment in ALGO actually supports installing an AppSource apps, uh, AppSource apps, uh, an AppSource app uh, along the way. So if you have a dependency on an AppSource app uh, and you've got it built, it will actually uh, install that AppSource app in the environment if it hasn't been installed already before deploying the AL app. So, so that piece actually works. Uh, but you won't be able to build unless you have the, the pieces there. On other things that you want to, to like deploy along with that, like the Power Platform thing is the first place where we took something else than an AL app. And we'll use that right now. It's in, in preview in a, in a different repository. And the reason for that is we want to make sure that we get an extensible model. And, and what we'll be looking at for other things would be places where you would have to write code then. You'd have to like s s put in a script somewhere that can create the other things that you need. I talked to a partner yesterday who wanted to, to plug in a, a data generation engine before he runs his tests and other things. So. So create an extensible mechanism for you to be able to extend, but still utilize everything of ALGO without modifying anything, but be able to extend. So that, that's going to be the answer now. Date, I have no idea. Yeah, so that, it's a very good point. What we showed you here right now in preview is for the PTE templates. Uh, we have AppSource coming soon. It's in our backlog. I don't think we're able to commit to any timeline yet, uh, but that's the next thing we'll be looking at here. Uh, and then stuff like Azure Functions is a great idea. I don't think it's something that we considered so far, uh, but I mean, bring it up on the idea side. And uh, it, I mean, it makes sense to have all your Microsoft uh, artifacts and be able to deploy them in one package. So that's definitely a good input. I have a question for you. What container solution are you using for the Power Container? For the today, yeah. I'm just using the standard one, so I do not use uh, ALA back or uh, Christoph, can you please repeat? So it's hard to hear your question. Ah, what kind of the containers I'm using? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you using the uh, built-in uh, or you're using Azure container instances? And no, no. So I'm using, um, Freddy, maybe you will take, because I'm just doing the default containers, right? So yeah. So what was the question? I didn't get it. So can you talk into the mic? Ah. Yeah. Uh, are you 
what you recommend actually, because you listed several solutions for containers for the build and test pipelines, uh, would you recommend uh, Azure to use Azure container instances for these things or the built-in? So the, I mentioned the Azure container instances is a future thing. Yeah. It's something yeah. we, are, we are working on. Um, also uh, Alpaca containers, which both will be cloud containers. Today, what's supported for dev environments is local dev ENV, which creates local containers, mm -hmm. or cloud dev ENV, which will create a sandbox for you. The other things will be added uh, in the future so that you can create an Azure container instance, an Azure VM, or a, um, an Alpaca container as well. I will probably yeah. use the sandboxes because I'm doing everything in cloud. So uh -huh. that for me is easier. But if I would need the container, then I will try to look. For now, I'm just using the standard. So it's like just taking the container from BP Container Services as of your some background stuff. OK, thank you. Another question up yeah. there as well. Would I be able to set up? Uh, AL go with uh, on-prem if you'll be able to set up AL go with on-prem so the question is uh, the, the reason why we don't have an on-premises uh, template is really that as, as soon as you start to talk about on-premises it, it pulls along like a lot of things like are you going to create your own DLLs are you going to uh, modify the base app are you going to do all of these things and that, those things are not supported as long as you stay within the limits of uh, of what you can do on cloud, meaning you're cloud ready, then you should be able to create a setup with ALGO for GitHub that compiles and makes your app ready. We do not have, at this time, a deployment mechanism for on-prem. I know that there are a few partners working on either taking uh, Waldo's ALOps uh, engine to be able to install packages for on-premises or create other workflows to integrate with AL go to deploy to on-premises. Uh, right. But if you do special things, like if you have your own DLLs or a, a modifying base app and other things, you might struggle more with AL go than, than you want to. Yeah, but building you can do. Uh, you can build uh, for on-prem as well. We have like two minutes left, maybe like one more question. Yeah, can go over lunch. There's a guy up here. Yep. Uh, thank you. Uh, I had a, a question regarding one of the pipelines that you ran that was um, that was checking the dependencies and all, uh, the app dependencies. So currently we have um, one repository per app typically, and some of the apps that we develop are um, basically the dependencies for some other apps. Um, how exactly would that function? And secondly, do you actually recommend um, combining um, all the apps into a single repository for like one project, um, as in what, what is the most efficient way of running pipelines in that sense? So it really has nothing to do with the running of the pipelines. It, but the, the, the recommended way of, of setting up an ALGO repository, uh, the, the, the strategy for that is that uh, the repository is the release vehicle. So all the apps that you release together, uh, which I recommend they would be in the same repository. They can be in multiple, but it's just easier that when you say, I create a release, version 1.0, I have all the apps there. Now, the project within that you can have many projects in the ALGO repository, um, these are the ones that you install together. So if you have Denmark, Italy, and, and Germany, then those would be projects in the repository. You, you release them together, but you install projects. And a project can be multiple apps uh, but the project is where you get the artifact, you get the, uh, the zip file with the apps, and that one you can like take here and install that. If you have dependencies on foreign things, you get an artifact called dependencies. So once you have the apps and the dependencies artifacts and the Power Platform artifact, you have everything you need to install uh, to a customer. Um, and and that's the recommended approach. If you want to like automatically like uh, handle the dependencies between these things you create this github packages auth context then all the apps all the builds are being automatically published to a nuget feed in github uh, which is private so it's only for your organization and the other repositories will automatically resolve those and find those just by adding in app json a guid to the app that you need to depend on and it will automatically resolve those dependencies from the other repositories that if you don't want to use NuGet, and I'm off over time now, but if you don't want to use NuGet, 
you can set up like app uh, dependency probing paths in your ALGO settings file to specify which repositories do I want to get my dependencies from, but that's, a, yeah, that's just more cumbersome than using the organizational-wide NuGet packages. I think we're over time. Thanks a lot for all Thank the for that. very interesting questions and for, uh, for, for watching us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.